Hello, this is Haku with the Bean, and I am here to record SV31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, like and comment, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions for me, please ask them down in the comments below. SCP-31, what is love? Item number, SCP-31, object class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures, SCP-31 is currently contained in the Ryong Hotel, located in the city of Myeongun, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, also known as North Korea. I'll try to read this once. As the nation is located it is entirely governed by an authoritarian regime with near complete control of state and national media. The possibility of information regarding SP 31 being released to the world at large is minimal. As said, regime is also cooperating with the Foundation in order to maintain physical security of the site. Foundation personnel are instructed to comply with their directive so long as they do not interfere with larger Foundation aims. The structure of a degree of gun tell serves to contain SC-31 within the central spire. Three secondary spires located at 120 degrees intervals from the central pyramid house type 9 have installed aid restriction systems, a locally manufactured version of the a right psionic field disruptor. Calibrated to focus a disruptive energy field towards the central spire, although unable to prevent physical escape of SP-31, these systems serve to prevent SV-31's physical ener psychic energies from escaping the a structure and affecting off-site personnel. Reclamation efforts of the hotel are currently underway, with local government forces utilizing hazmat suit personnel armed with flame projectors and chemical sprayers to decontaminate areas affected by SV-31. However, due to the slow pace of progress and SV-31's offensive capabilities, reclamation Efforts are vastly behind structure, I mean behind schedule. Initial estimates were that SP-31 central core would be reclaimed by 1989, but as of 2021, efforts are still go uh, ongoing. It's almost 2023, and I'm guessing that efforts are still going on. Personnel who become affected by SP-31's the psychic abilities are to be terminated immediately to prevent their biomatter from becoming incorporated into its physical matrix. Description SAP-31 is an amorphous this organism with a, with a mass of over 7,500 kilograms that has illustrated the ductwork and maintenance infrastructure of the building. Tendrils of emerging from SAP-31 central mass have spread through the hotel, plus plumbing and ductwork to all 100 105 floors of the building. At its peak, over 75% of the hotel's 3,000 rooms were contaminated by SV-31. Reclamation efforts have destroyed blank percent of the initial infestation, but over blank rooms remain, remain affected by SV-31. SCP-31 tendrils ter terminate in a pod-like structure, sporocarp, consisting of an ovoid structure approximately 2 meters in length, with multiple Auxilia like extras branching off, off the main body. On some occasions, subjects in the presence of, of an SP 31 spark will okay, instead perceive it as an individual the subject had a close emotional connection to in their past. The SP 31 spark bow metamorphosed into the shape of the person perceived and attempted to persuade the subject to remain with them for an extended period of time. The SP 31 spark will on next attempt to make a physical contact with the target individual with their cilia-like structures. Juices will be injected into the subject's body, and their flesh will be consumed and incorporated into SV-31 on body mass. In the meantime, a secondary flagellum will engulf the subject's cranium and brain, replacing the blood vessels with its own tendrils, which will maintain life support of the affected brain by some yet undiscovered means. The tendrils will deserate the subject and transport the subject's cranium back through the building's ductwork where it is incorporated into the central mass. 
Voyage taken in through surveillance drones indicate that there are currently over a thousand crania and network of tendrils attached to SCP-3081 Central Mass. By all indications, the brains it's contained within are still alive and may be conscious. History SCP-31 was recovered on October 22nd, 1948, following con contradictory police records taken after a riot in the city of Redacted, where several citizens had gathered around a refugee camp professing love and devotion to a cult-like leader, whom they referred to as the Beloved. Once initial contact and assessment was made, the civilians were pacified through a widespread distribution of inhaled tranquilizers and aerosolized amnestics. MTF site A7, they deal with house stuff like this, was able to recover SP SP-31 central mass and move it into containment. In its initial form, SP-31 consisted of a single amorphous entity, approximately 75 kilograms in weight, a vaguely humanoid shape. It had not yet manifested the ability to consume and incorporate human biomatter or into itself or any mind-affecting properties aside from inspiring unusual feelings of love and, de and, and devotion. As of, uh, of November 16, 1949, 1948, I mean, SP-31 has had been classified as safe and was in containment at site blank. Unfortunately, the Korean conflict, which began on June 25, 1950, resulted in the destruction of the Foundation containment site at Yongyang and the loss of all anomalies contained within. By the end of the conflict in 1953, all other anomalies were accounted for, either removed or confirmed destroyed, aside from SCP-31, which was presumed lost and in the wild. Foundation as a Assets first became aware of the reemergence of SCP-31 in 1992 when construction on the Yongyang Hotel in Pyongyang suddenly halted. I could not pronounce these words. Personnel uh, I'll personnel liaising with the local regime confirmed that an anomalous this fact had resulted in the disappearance of numerous workers employed in the construction of the hotel, and a Foundation mobile task force was dispatched to investigate. All members of the M MTF were subsequently lost in action, and site was locked down and declared off limits. All work on the young hotel ceased for 16 years, aside from the installation of the Heaven's Blade research systems on the secondary spires. In 2008, increased infiltration of SCP-31 into the building's infrastructure resulted in the possibility of its discovery by outside persons. The local regime immediately ordered that windows be installed on the structure to hide the existence of SCP-31 from others, resulting in the loss of blank more construction workers. Unfortunately, this was perceived as a resumption of construction on the building, resulting in explanations that the structure would actually be completed and open to the public in the future. Reclamation efforts commence within the year, utilizing in flame and solvent protecting equipment to destroy SP 31's tendrils and spiral carves, with each team accompanied by a political officer assigned to terminate any personnel who become emulated into SP 31. As of this current state, which is February 27, 2021, that's when this document written, I'm guessing. The commission efforts are still underway, but data personnel are continuing to rely with the local regime to match their progress, which is slow but steady. Appendix X1 Excerpts from Riza email server. From Riza, Associate Director Eleanor Jones. Subject: Incomplete for containment procedure files for SCP-31. Team, I have an, an issue that needs immediate clarification. I have the young hotel as the location of a mind-affecting steal from the proto or afro asiatic culture group. As you can see, that's the same location of this. 
Brain Sling Flesh Network. Are these two objects related at all? Is this hotel some kind of uh, deep arcade containment facility? If so, we should put that into the subject's special containment procedure this file. Please reply at your earliest convenience. Oh, that's a whole other SCP. We aren't dealing with that right now. From Records Office is 2201 to Rice Associate Director El Eleanor Jones. Replying to incomplete incoherent procedure files for SCP-31. Eleanor, as far as my team can figure, there doesn't appear to be a link between two objects. In fact, I'm getting conflicting reports from the containment teams regarding whether or not either of these objects either actually exist. The 1427 team is uh, insisting the hotel is the site for the steel, and there's no brain and eating flesh network there, and the, the EPRK government is part of the containment and, and procedures. Then I have the team for SV31 insisting that the DPRK government's involvement is purely politically motivated, i.e. we don't want to get involved so long as they're taken care of it, and there's no such thing as mi as manufacturing still located within the building. Which is concerning given that we've got two manufacturing anomalies within the same space and two teams with two separate and stories here. Possible oh, Eastern Amo 3 is situation? When? From Riza uh, Associate Director Eleanor Jones to Records Office 2201. Three SP331 and SP1427 records conflict was incomplete in special concern procedures file for SP31. Okay, someone needs to get to the bottom of this. We ha can't have a useful database with such blatantly contradictory information. Make it your first priority to resolve this. From Records Office 2201 to Oreza, Associate Director Eleanor Jones. Eleanor will do. Enter the instructor as SCP 0031 F9 ZX. With a sister ticket, entered as 001 1427 F99 ZX. Gwen. From Razor Associate Director Eleanor Jones. Team, can I get an update on the issue? From the Records Rights Office. Eleanor, my apologies. I guess I wasn't included. Further updates will be sent out through the tracker system. We're gathering information and assessing the situation. We'll keep you informed, Gwen. Team, it's been three days. Can I please get the requested update or at least a deadline by which we'll have the re issue resolved? Eleanor, as I say in, the, in Tracker Update 22 on this ticket, we found the problem is more complicated than we expected, requiring us to uh, uh, officially send a person from HQ over to uh, Yangon to investigate. It's taking us some time to get through it, uh, that North Korean and, and red tape. Totalian Aryan government, am I right? And to get the gov and to get the payment done to resign Jenny's responsibilities while she's gone. Team, it's been two weeks. Why has there been no update on this issue? This is a highly time-sensitive issue, and your lack of progress is extremely disappointing. We need to get the resolve, uh, this resolved before Mario has to uh, step up in. Eleanor, I can assure you that, per your instructions, resolving this issue has been our top priority. We've been cross-referencing in between in the document, and the only discrepancy appears to be the fact that there are discrepancies. As in, all the documentation for one project is internally consistent, and all the documentation for the second project is internally consistent. It's only when you put them together that things don't make sense. We tried to talk to the project lead, it's of both teams, but neither of them seems to know how the other exists. We tried having them look up the other teams and speak in the file in the system. They can read just fine, but it doesn't make sense to them. 
SP31 a team has no record of a 1427 on site and vice versa. We thought there might be some kind of time par space parallel dimension and sting going. So we had a member of each team try and meet up at the same place at the Rion Hotel outside the front entrance. They were not able to find each other, despite confirming that they were both in the same place at the same time. Photographs with timestamps attached. We then had the two members try to meet up at a location outside the hotel. They were able to meet up just fine. When they tried to return to the hotel together, they lost track of each other and ended up not being able to find each other. We tried sending Jenning over to Pyongyang and to investigate. That was a pain yes, given in visa restrictions into North Korea. They weren't able to meet with both teams simultaneously, but they were able to meet with each team one on one. Both teams gave them a tour of their containment facility, and everything seemed to be in order. 31 on team showed them in the reclaimed rooms and the cleanup teams, while 1427 showed them the location of the steel. And the other team was able to allow direct contact with the anomaly because of containment procedures, but they were able to confirm its existence through remote cameras. The DPRK team for 31 had no idea of about the existence of any of the EPRK assets being used to contain 1427 and vice versa. This might not be too surprising given information and control was in that country. To make things even worse, Jenny from a uh, call from Amu and me at the e e Korean branch asking what the hell a Rise of staff member was doing in the city. She contacted them as far as, as Korea is, is concerned. We do not and have have not had any assets at the young hotel. Jenny went so far as to ask as you and me to take her to the hotel and try around a bit, but she got out there. She couldn't find any trace of SCP-31, 1427, or her teams involved with either. So in conclusion, after three weeks of hard work, we can conclude from the evidence one of the following must be true. One. SCP-31 exists, and SCP-1427 does not. 2. SCP-1427 exists, and SCP-31 does not. 3. Both SCP-1427 and SCP-31 exist, and there is an anomaly at the Young Hotel preventing either team from knowing about the other or proving the other exists. Four, neither SCP-31 or SCP-1427 exists, and there is an anomaly of the, at the Rio Grande Hotel, creating the impression that exists in the Reza uh, Central staff, but the Korean branch staff are not affected. Five, one or both, both of SCP-31 and SCP-1427 may or may not exist, and the Korean branch are under a mind-affecting compulsion that they do not, or were under a compulsion that does. 6. All or none of the above may be true simultaneously due to multi world theory, a parallel universes, or timey wimey frickery stuff. Go. Now, if you have any idea on what we can freaking do to fix that, and I've. I've got that. Gwen. Hello, team. Effective immediately. Gwendova Kirkpatrick has been relieved of her duties as the private lead of Records Office 2201. All Records Office 2201 staff had to make a resolution to take its SCP-31 and 1427 their top priority. No matter, no matter work on any project is continuing until so this issue is, is resolved. From Director Maya Jones, Record Keeping and Information Security Administration, to all Rise of Associate Directors. Subject, a font for well and other updates. Good afternoon, and Rise of Staff. Thank you again for all your hard work. Today's email will be a short one. 1. The uh, 314 update of has been updated to with snapshot 2407D. Please remind your team logs you log in into the test instance and confirm proper functionality. Send any bug reports to the skull team as soon as possible. We know this involves taking time out of your day for an additional task, but the sooner we complete this wide scale of stress test, the sooner we can roll out the new version and for some fears to rest. 
<sighs> 2. I am sad to announce that, that Eleanor has chosen to retire due to health concerns. This announcement came as a surprise to me as well. Due to the sudden nature of her health crisis, she is unable to say goodbye to us before being transferred to Blank Hospital, where I understand she is envelopsing nicely. Please expect a follow-up email with a link to the crowdfunding page for a going-away gift for her, as well as an address where you can send cards, gifts, and other well wishes. That's how we can appoint a new AD to take over her projects. We will, be, we will definitely be splitting her teams up between several different existing ADs. Expect an announcement of, of the new table of organization by noon GMT. Please take a moment during your, your next weekly team a meeting to go over to section 22B before you enter the suits in. In documentation of your hand and book like with your staff, and make sure that everyone knows the proper procedures to follow or if and when you end up with an information anomaly. Maria. That was a long one. How long was it? Oh, half an hour. Now we're going to SCP-32, Brother's Bride. Item number, SCP-32, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. SCP-32 is to be housed in Automated Containment Unit and 535 I/15. Direct contact with SCP-32 is to be restricted to research-relevant tasks only. Interviews, if deemed necessary, are to be carried out using the Units remote communication array. But SP 32s presence is not directly harmful to the human body. Exposure to it is to be limited to periods of 12 hours or less due to its adverse side effects on most beneficial microorganisms. SP 32 is not to be exposed to any biological material not refined or otherwise tempered by humanity with an emphasis on non human living entities. For full list of classifications, please see the document. SP-32 neither requires nor or requests substances or other forms of comfort. SCP-32 is a description. SP-32 is a type F imperfect external resemblance, internally inconsistent. Human and civil acrum of currently unknown origins it is composed of an outer shell of pigmented silicone, five and a half F millimeters thick. And various plastic fiber or polymers, with the outward appearance of a Caucasian woman during the third decade of her life. SP32's interior is composed entirely of liquid and refined oil, lacking any skeletal or muscle structure. Despite this, SP32 is capable of locomotion and speech. SP32 is capable of maintaining the illusion of humanity at a moderate distance, though it becomes unconvincing at a closer range, causing mild discomfort in most observers. This effect has been deemed non-anomalous, despite apparently possessing fully realized cognitive abilities. SP-32's claim that is not sapient, acting only as an immediate instrument of its creators. The Foundation has, been able to, has not been able to verify or refute this claim as of yet. SCP-32 possesses extreme adverse effects to any biological entity in its close vicinity, if not created, willfully influenced, manipulated, by or simply relating to humanity. While the effect nature of these effects varies, SP-32 whose presence inevitably, in inevitably causes several irreparable damage to the ability of any living organism and exchange and or use this energy. While the flora it loses the ability to photosynthesize or otherwise produce or consume energy, fauna the Use of its respiratory and digestive systems, etc. This applies to microorganisms as well. Though SCP 32's effects seem to favor damage to their uh, reproductive systems instead. As hypothesized that the symbiotic relationships that microorganisms have to humanity is, re is the reason for the descriptions. See, this is really hard to read right now. SCP-32 was discovered sitting on the doorstep of the inner compound of S uh, Foundation Site Blank, near Blank, Slovakia. 
When questioned by Foundation security personnel, S-332 explained its anomalous effects and claimed it was there to be stored. Surveillance footage shows no record of the time of its arrival, and it is not, not yet known how SCP-32 came into no sight at blank's location or approached it without being spotted. When asked for its recent and for seeking foundation custody, SCP-32 that it was there of the command of its creator, seeking indefinite storage until claimed. Now, we're going to read uh, uh, the first and then, and then which is the first interview. Note, this interview was as recorded near the time of SP-32's initial containment by Dr. Alexander Kovac, site blank resident for psychologist, following its initial examination by site security. Begin long. Begin log, sorry. Before we begin, there's something I feel I should ask you. Since security is so often neglects doing so, it is not strictly conforming to protocol, but I tend to make things things easier. I was instructed to cooperate. Good, very good. Tell me then. What is your name? I don't have one. People have names. I'm not one. Is that so? What did your so-called creators call you then? They didn't. Surely they had to refer to you somehow. I am a vessel of their will and nothing else. They never needed to call. They never will. In that case, would you mind if I refer to you as SCP-32? I was instructed to cooperate. So you said. So you said. Tell me then, what is the purpose of your coming here? I am to be stored until collected. Security told me that much, but why here and collected by whom? Collected by the ones they wish to torment and stored here because in finding me here, he will suffer further. Is that so? Is that person you refer to part of this organization then? Do you... Do your creators bear some grudge towards a particular operative? He is not one of you. Merely a one-time sympathizer of sorts. He believes he tried to help him once and if he is forced here, if he finds me here, he will die. That will hurt him. They have no interest in any of you or your organization. You are here as a tool, just as I am. Who is this man then? What did he do to earn, earn this sort of treatment from your creators? He did not know his place. One when he should have lost. Was proud when he should have been humbled. Was wasteful with gifts too precious for abuse. And you are here as punishment? He was already punished severely, forced away from kin and kind, to endlessly wander, to destroy against his will, to poison humanity by his very presence, eternal solitude, flavored by ceaseless guilt, a masterwork of torment, they say. If that's the case, why are you here? Because even in this existence, there is the occasional moments of solace. At times, he may yet look to the world and see things he will not destroy, look to nature and feel warm wonder, and bask in the false light of ancient, moldy memories. It keeps him sane, gives him hope, that will not serve. Hence my presence. I am to be his last in doing, a hastening to the end of, of reasoning. <sighs> And how will your presence do that? Are you meant to deceive him in some way? Is that why you look the way you do? In a manner of speaking, eventually his wanderings will lead him here, to me, in a day, or a month, or a century, and he will recognize me, and see what they think of his precious memories, how they mock him. He'll understand that because of his actions, she is forever beyond his grasp, and all that remains to him is me, a similar crumb. 
as our official as his hope. When he finds me, I will attach myself to him, and he will watch in mockery of his memories, destroy his last source of solace. And that will be that. I, um, you said he will recognize you. Why? I used to be his wife. This interview was held uh, six months following SCP-32's initial containment. As part of a series of interviews meant to evaluate SCP-32's cognitive abilities and personality, or lack thereof. I hate her. Well, that's certainly a way to start an interview. You, can you elaborate? The one I was made to look like. My mold. I hate her. An interesting sentiment for you to have, considering your repeated assurance that you possess no conscious business or feelings of your own. I don't. I hate her because they want me to. It serves their purpose. How do you get that uh, impression? The first thing they did after creating me was to show her to me. It's not something they often do. I don't follow. Interview, interview with those who pass beyond their, their hells. They might be vengeful, spiteful, even cruel, but they take their duties very seriously. Just to show her to me, to risk disturbing her final rest, they wouldn't do that without a purpose. And she was beautiful, so peaceful, serene, whole, even God, even gone, I mean, even dead. I could see the essence of who she used to be. Who she still was and forever will be. Her soul told me she didn't get to live for all that long. When she lived, she was herself. She was alive. So I hated her. Do you know what it feels like to be made as a mockery? At every line of that smooth, silent face, I saw a twisted reflection in my own. Fragrant skin to mock old plastic. Soft hair to synthetic fiber, blood to oil, soul to nothing at all. Excuse me if this sounds presumptuous, but I can't and imagine feelings like this coming from anywhere but yourself. Can't you see? This is all part of their plan. When he finds me, when he sees what the brothers created just to punish him further, he'll go mad. Because of what they did to the memory of his wife? Not only that, at because he'll see me. He'll see how much I hate her, and how much I hate myself for not being her. Hate being here at all. And then what? Then, a final realization. And what would that be? He never won. Now we're going to SCP-33, the missing number. How long was this? Oh, not that long. Okay, we can do it. Item number, SCP-33, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures should be... SP-33 should be inscribed on any sheet of a regularly shaped lived in handcrafted paper, papyrus, canvas, or vellum, but not involved in active observation or study. The dimensions of the paper-like product should have no parallel boardings, orders, no right angles, and no one side lengths should be equal to any other. So those are three di safe dimensions. When contained in this manner, the paper-like product should be secured in a locking non-combination storage spot of at least 30 meters from any computing or recording device. Logs for a checkout order or check-in of SP-33 should be filed out at the most safe distance of 33 meter, of 30 meters to avoid possible contamination of the paper product or electronic device the log is kept in. When root for study, SP-33 can be copied into a white slash chalkboard with 33 is safe dimensions by class D staff. Upon, t 
uh, answer to the white uh, chalkboard, the paper-like product that contained SP33 should be incinerated. Observation and study should take place in a secured conference room uh, at least 30 meters from any computing or recording device. For the max, um, 2560 is second viewing window. All observations are notes should be made on, on 33 safe materials. Under no circumstances should any notes recording SP33 leave the storage facility or be put in or be input into a computing or recording device. At precisely 2,000 seconds of viewing, a source must stop and SP33 should be transferred to a new SP33 is a paper-like product and returned to storage by Class C staff. The white such chalk upward utilized in research must be incinerated as soon as possible after the transfer is complete. Regardless of whether SP33 has faded naturally from um, its surface at 25 six, six, seconds. Whether 33 to 8 is, is hot or really slow, the it delay it areas as effects of SP33 is unknown. It is realized to be regular borders, errors in handcrafting by ethnically unpredictable humans somewhat on how this disrupts the logic which allows SP33 to function. Hmm. Description SP33 appears as a field of complex mathematical symbols ranging from simple lay and identify representation to those only interpretable by highly trained mathematicians. The sum of these symbols is equal to a previously unknown integer designated that are primed by Professor R. Hutchinson of immediate value between blank and blank, as all modern mathematical. Okay, calculations are performed lacking the knowledge or use of SC33. Its introduction into any system and organized without out of begins of writing the numerical and eventual structural integrity of its system. This effect extends to SC33's transfer to any paper like defined as paper, vellum, Paris, canvas, surface not possessing SC33 safe dimensions or any computing or recording device. Second, in addition, SCP-33 has been shown has shown an ability to leap from an SCP-33 safe material to a manufactured or electrical material, which can destabilize in at least one in instance. SCP-433D, requiring the instruction of a 30 meter safe distance for electronic devices and paper-like products without S without 33 safe dimensions. There is currently no old 33 safe specification for electronics orage. Blink of the blank optional research products involving SP33 are dedicated to find such method for electronic storage. Blink of observational research products are dedicated to the application of 33 as a neutralizing factor for potentially hostile machine logic based SCP objects. Clifying commentary from Professor Hutchinson's Falls are not in specialized staff in document 33A. Effects may be reviewed in document 33Q. Document 33A. Debriefing for Professor for Professor. No, the briefing of Professor Hutchinson after the first observation. Grand skip edited for clarity. Every child should know 2 plus 2 is 4, a solid mathematical certainty of numerical order and value is, based, is for all logic based systems. We know that 2 comes after 3 and after or 3. Oh no, wait, oops. We know that after 2 comes 3 and after 3 comes 4. But this formula of proves that is that we miss a number somewhere. Imagine if all our technology was based on the belief that uh, and after 4 came 6, we simply didn't know or conceive of 5. That is, in, that is in essence what this formula proves. We miss a number. I can't tell you why the handcrafted 
and vellum works best. But I can only surmise that and it displaces mathematical predictability in new ways. One theoretical alert of the crafting process due to human error serves to eliminate any traces of regularity that would be found in a machine created product. Two, the irregular reporters seem to confuse it somehow, as if it gets locked up looking for a pattern to identify and use that as an escape hatch. I'll tell you this though, I don't think it should be left, left on anything longer than a few days. It will find a pattern eventually. I don't think it destroys anything. I think it tr tries integrating, integrating itself into our system and our system can't hold it. It's like trying to gra grab another book into a full bookshelf. If you get a hammer, you can get it in there, but the whole shelf bursts eventually. If it gets an internet which will potentially experience a full IT infrastructure collapse, then In hours. Document 33Q. Test results. Trial 33 down to 5. SV33 it transcribed onto a single sheet of a 8 point in by 11 inch manufactured by copy paper, hereafter X1. The second piece of identical paper, hereafter X2, placed 30 centimeters away. <sighs> Symbols consistent with the content of SV33 begin appearing on, on X2. X1 unchanged. Full content of SV33 is formulae appear on the surface of X2. X1 unchanged. X1, X2 both appear wet. Symbols still visible. X1 is now roughly one part apparently water and five parts pulp like substance, still filling in an 8.5 by 11 an inch flat plane. Symbols become unintelligible. X2 um, still appears wet. Symbols visible. X1 no longer visible at all. Liquid part appears to have evaporated. Pulp like substance apparently. So of elevated X2 now roughly one part liquid and five parts full life absence, still filling an 8.5 by 11 inch flat plane. Symbols unintelligible. X2 no longer visible at all. Liquid edited apart appears to have evaporated, and full life substance apparently is sublimated. Now, SCP 34. Obsidian Ritual or Knife. Item Number SCP-34 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-34 is to be kept in a, in a secure room with access granted only to Level 4 personnel. SCP-34 itself will be kept in a locked case that is under 24 or our surveillance when not in lab conditions. SCP-34 protective sheet cannot be removed under any circumstances. Any personnel in contact with SCP-34 must be placed under a 24-hour observation period until their identities can be confirmed. Description: SCP-34 is a con is a primitive knife constructed out of pure obsidian. Tests revealed that SP-34 is approximately 1,000 years old. Despite its crude method and of construction and age, SP-34 is still incredibly sharp and requires no maintenance to retain its edge. <sighs> Expert analysis hypothesizes that SP-34 may be of South American origin, and that it may have been used in Native American in rituals. Several accounts from Spanish and Quest stories exploring the Blank region support this hypothesis, with detailed writings on how Blank priests would flay their victims alive with similar lives and wear their skin as a tribute to their gods. SCP-34 has the ability to allow its bearers to take on the appearance of another individual. If SCP-34 is used to cut a piece of flesh from a living individual and, the, and that piece of flesh is placed against the skin of another individual, the second 
an individual to uh, take on not only the appearance but all physical characteristics of the first individual. The testing has shown that the minimum amount of skin required can be as little as one square centimeter. However, testing has also revealed that the amount of time the transformation lasts is directly proportional to the amount of flesh used. The ratio of time the transformation lasts to flesh has been measured at approximately one hour for every square centimeter used. Once the time limit has passed, the affected individual will revert to their original form. Analysis of SCP-34 or disability shows that at its methods of mimicking another individual is nearly flawless. Not only does SCP-34 change its various physical appearance, but their actual no physical attributes as well, including height, weight, muscle mass, bone density, hair growth, eyesight, strength, physical, all in medical condition, and even in DNA. The only physical traits that are not carried over in the transformation and process are wounds caused by SCP-34 itself. So they still retain their original personality and memories while transformed, even though the process is nearly instantaneous. Taking only a few seconds, human test subjects have described the transformation process as extremely painful. Subjects also may suffer a psychological trauma depending on the extent of their physical transformation. Side effects are, are especially serious if the subject takes on the appearance of a person with their differing gender or with wildly different physical attributes. However, in order to function properly, the individuals who have their flesh cut off by SP-34 must still be biologically alive have to maintain transformation. To the individual whose identity has been stolen, expired, the effect immediately wears off. Further details may be found in Lab Report 34A. Also, SP-34 only appears to work on human subjects. Cross species experiments with SCP-34 have resulted in data expunged. SCP-34 came into foundation possession when an imposter disguised as Dr. Blank attempted to infiltrate Site Blank. The apostle was apprehended when an authority discovered the real Dr. Blank tied up in his home with a large person and of his right arm skinned. Further details can be found in Post Interrogation Report 2211. We decided to test several scenarios dealing with the limits of SCP 34's capabilities. Test 1 Sample taken from the C's human cadaver. Applied to subject D E4R52. There is no observable effect. Test 2. Sample taken from D50 D532 and applied to D4 D452. D452 successfully imitates D532's appearance upon termination of D32 532. D 452 immediately reverts back to original form. Test 3. Sample taken from D433 while under a medically induced coma and applied to subject D452. D452 successfully even mixed D433's appearance and manages to maintain transformation and consciousness. <sighs> Test 4. Sample taken from a dead, brain dead medical patient who suffered a massive brain hemorrhage as an applied to D452. D452 successfully moves the patient's appearance but immediately loses consciousness upon transformation. D452 does not regain consciousness until the transformation period expires. D452 retains no memory of the event. <sighs> Test 5. Sample from a D625 who suffered a broken arm due to confrontation with security staff. I'm going to start calling him Bob now. Bob successfully even makes XD625's appearance, including the broken arm. Bob's broken arm is remanded when the transformation period ends. 
Test 6. Sample take it from a, mar it, from a terminally ill pa medical patient and applied to Bob. The patient's terminal illness was caused by an inherent generic, genetic defect. Bob successfully mimics the patient's appearance as well as the patient's illness. Both the terminally ill patient and Bob expire at the, the same time, after which Bob reverts back to original form. Test 7. Sample taken from a chant and fancy and applied to Mike. Mike experiences rapid growth of hair across their, their entire body. There are otherwise no other significant physical or er, physiological changes. By here, this fierce when transformed and period expires. Subject taken from an Atlantic salmon and applied to Mike. There is no observable effect. Under O5 authorization, a sample taken from SCP unknown is applied to Mike. Mike exhibits extremely adverse reaction upon transformation and data expunged, resulting in significant damage to the testing environment, multiple injuries of, among tests and security staff, and the death of, of Mike. Testing of anomalous humanoids with SCP-34 is indefinitely suspended. <sighs> As for standard or operating procedure, we first said to interrogate the if prisoner created non unviolent and non invasive means. However, such methods proved ineffective. We began to influence conventional interrogation techniques. While partially successful, we deemed it necessary to use SV blank, SV blank, SV blank, and SV blank. We managed to learn the following facts. The prisoner had extensive knowledge of the existence of the foundation and its inner workings. The prisoner had ex extensive knowledge of on other SCP related agencies and groups. The prisoner was not acting under any official capacity from any government agency. The prisoner obtained SCP 34 and extracted ends on its operation from an unknown benefactor. The prisoner was given very specific instructions to infiltrate site blank and maintain his position until further notice. The prisoner had enough samples of Dr. Blank to stay within site blank for blank days. Regrettably, the prisoner did not survive interrogation. Now we're going on to... Uh, we'll do that one tomorrow. I'm a bit tired for it today. This has been SCP-31, 32, 33, and 34. I hope you enjoyed. Please leave a like and a comment and subscribe to the channel. Please ask questions in the comments down below. I'll see you next time with the Possessive Mask.